it's the weekend. It's mailbag. Um, we have got a mountain of questions to get through today. I'm not even exaggerating there. So many came in. Um, I am joined by Matt, Dave, and Foxy. Uh, so we'll go straight in. I was thinking we'll leave the hot topic until the end this week, so we at least definitely finish on a, a relative positive, I suppose. Uh, but we'll start with Gary's question from last week. Uh, we took on extra poignancy by adding it this week. Uh, so Gary said last week, what's got a worse defence? The C defence is in West Kirby or Bobby Brown shoes in the Liverpool away. Both 4 nils. Kiev away 5-2 games. You could probably add uh, Big Sean Dice with the 6 nil away at Chelsea to that, no, couldn't you? So for a bit mm. of context on this one, uh, if anyone didn't see the pictures from West Kirby last week uh, when there was flooding everywhere, someone appears to have put the uh, floodgates in wrong at West Kirby. So while the water got over them, it couldn't get back. So the road was flooded and the problem was fine, <laughs> which was exactly the opposite to what they wanted. Um, let's go. Who's got the worst defence? Was that was? I don't want to dwell too much on Monday night. I've said it was possibly the worst game I've ever seen, and I don't say that lightly. But um, who's got the worst defence? I, I, I think we've had quite a few like that. I know it was bad on Monday and you were there, Les, so you kind of got a first hand, but... Every couple of years, we have one where we just look like it's all gone to shit. There's one in the derby, wasn't there? We had Michael Keane defending on the halfway line. Was that the Marco Silva one? That was Marco yeah. Silva, wasn't it? When it looked, and, was he three and up in 20 minutes or something? I can't like, remember. Every time he went forward, they were going to score. Did Gerard got the hat trick, wasn't he? No, that was around yeah. 20. Okay. See, that, that, that's the problem there with Foxy's just... Uh, what he's talking about there is that there's, there's that many over a certain time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, fucking hell, just turn the, turn the game off now. Presumably. Yeah, I'm, I remember like Arsenal with the Lescott saga a while back, and then I'm sure Spurs have done that a few times at their place. The first one I remember is Villa 6 Everton 2, and Tony <laughs> Daly ripped us apart, and that was one of the most traumatic experiences. It's probably like late 80s, early 90s or something. Yeah, but it does happen. The, the silver and white stripe kit, weren't we? Yeah. Fantastic kit. Did we only wear that once as well for that game, I think, didn't we? Yeah, well, I mean, this one, first time out against City. Ancelotti, did we like get bin five nil or something? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That, that that was when Guardiola went uber ball, wasn't it? And put his yeah, like yeah. Champions League team out against us, and then his second string got in the Champions League final a week later. Yeah, Weird. Matt, what do you make of all that then? Defenses, talk to me about defenses. Where you've seen the West Kirby one spectacular, like it's just a a phenomenal failure of the most basic engineering. <laughs> Like, yeah. Which way do the hinges go? Okay, how heavy is water? They basically <laughs> built themselves a canal, didn't they? Basically. Protect the promenade. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. Do you know what I mean? Having digested it for a few days, it didn't feel like a 6 0 on Monday. Like, especially the first four. It was just one of those days, wasn't it, where everything went wrong and every single time they came near our goal, it went in. Like, on another day, we get a spoily deflection out of the corner or. You know, it's just it was just one of those days. I think we've had like the Arsenal one, the uh, the six one, the Lescott strike. That was, I would think, much much worse than that on Monday. Yeah, yeah, that was that. Yeah, that was sort of any opening day of the season optimism just evaporated straight away, didn't it? Um, yeah. I think the thing that worry, is worrying me is we've got Liverpool next weekend and Arsenal away still to come, mm. which are potentially two pads. I know Liverpool are rubbish, but they can not score goals. Yeah. They'll, they'll turn up against us. Dave, where are you on this? I'll be turning this off uh, soon when you start to see those sort of things. Um, I've got the, the one in mind. To, so it's a little bit of context too. It was when we qualified for the Champions League and we went and got beat. Was it 7-1 away at Arsenal when we just guaranteed that we were going to finish fourth? Yeah, 7-0, I think, wasn't it? it was seven, yeah, we didn't even oh, score. Seven nil, yeah. <laughs> we didn't even score in that one. And um, yeah, I, I thought... You know, fine, you're not asked about that game because you've just guaranteed finishing the Champions League. But then I thought, hang on a minute, this is really embarrassing. You And, and also you've embarrassed the rest of the Premier League as well by, by qualifying for the Champions League and then going to... Were they in top? Were, were they the league winners that season? I don't think they were, were they? No, Chelsea won. Awesome, Chelsea season. won it and you've just gone there and, and got absolutely slaughtered. I mean, can you imagine if you're going down to there as a, as a fan and you're absolutely bouncing around going down to London? And I'm, I'm pretty certain it was a night game as well. Um, when you're going down there celebrating, you go in, you get beat 7 0. Even then, even then, when you want to celebrate getting in the top four, you're not coming away from that game thinking, 
yes, lads, we're still in the top four. It doesn't matter. And I mean, I'm sorry, you're not. You've got to have some sort of some looking, sort of pride. You know what I mean? That you though, take with you. It is objectively very funny that we like it was funny got fourth <laughs> with a minus goal difference and like fifty odd points. I know, yeah, that was, I mean, that was a sixty-one, that, wasn't it? Oh, it was sixty-one, sorry, fourth. That's the stinker yeah. of a season. That, isn't it? that is a bad, bad season. Yeah. Well, for for context with that game, we conceded seven goals in the final match. Chelsea conceded fifteen goals in the entire season. Wow. Insane, isn't it? That Chelsea team. <laughs> what type of season is this? <laughs> fifteen <laughs> goals. Pure, pure Barclays, isn't it? Although yeah. I think that was the season before Barclays even came in. Yeah. <laughs> It but, be the but it was funny. It's like the other season when we had Arsenal last game after staying up, and you mm. could see like Pickford walking in, still hanging out of his ass. Yeah, just not <laughs> like, Just yeah. blowing air through his cheeks, <laughs> and he, he wasn't even on the bench, was he? I think. But uh, that, see that that was that was the, that was the thing about the Palace game, wasn't it? That season, although we had two games to sort of survive. I mean, I know we would have done anyway because the others were so bad. But effectively, we had two games to survive, and we all said, "Well, we've got one." Because we don't yeah. beat Palace, we, there's no way we're getting anything, oh, anything yeah. at Arsenal. Um, I think many people forget that, you know, that even our fans will forget that we had a game after Palace. Because the, the, yeah, the it's... euphoria that kept us up, because <laughs> everyone just rolled that, that Arsenal game Did off. anyone watch it? Did anyone go? No. What score was it? I, honestly, I can't, I can't remember the score. Five, yeah. I think we got a goal in that, you know. I think. Think. There you go. Says it all. Let's, let's move on to Lee's question. A little, little bit, a little bit happy this one. Uh, had the Sunday's game as he played for both teams. Where do you rate Kevin Campbell in strikers you've seen play for us? A um, little bit of context on this: he scored forty-seven and one hundred and forty-five appearances, so that's about one in three. Um, but obviously, it was his, yeah. his spell on loan, wasn't it, that really sort of cemented his place in our hearts and sort of cemented him a, a full-time move to Everton, where he scored nine goals in eight games on the run in. To uh, effectively keep us up, Foxy, where where are you putting Super Kev? Uh, I guess like if you go Lukaku as our best striker that I can remember for a while, yeah. he's probably second. After that, I think I, I I think in terms of kind of goals to games ratio, there's no one that really compares to that. I, I quite like Calvert Lewin, but he doesn't score any goals. Um, Ferguson before that, talismatic, but didn't really score. I, I can't think of anyone quite like Super Kev. Yeah, and Lukaku. I think he he also, um, and this is no mean feat as we've seen since he left us. He got the best out of Franny Jeffers as well, didn't he? When they were in that partnership together, I think that was the yeah, best yeah, yeah. Jeffers ever played in his yeah, career. Yeah. So that that can't go uh, can't go unnoticed. Like uh, Matt, see, Super Kev was like when I was pretty young, so I don't have any real memories of seeing him in person. Not many memories of seeing him on the telly, but. Just historically, his actual record he is probably at least top five, if not top three, of my lifetime. Like Rom, him, the Yak. <laughs> like, I do have a soft spot for Louis Aha, mainly because he scored twice on my birthday against Chelsea. And when we signed him, I just didn't get it. I was like, we do not sign players like this. Like, because yeah. in my mind, like, when did we sign him? 2007? Seven, yeah. Around the it, yeah. I, mean, I, think so I, I was like, yeah. I was like sixteen, seventeen, and I was like, he's still an alright player. Then <laughs> yeah. I think the equivalent yeah. now will be us signing someone like Martial. <laughs> yeah. A bit, yeah. Like, yeah. Nah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See on Sunday. <laughs> Do you know what? We've got. A, I've got a bit of a not an origin story, but for Chris Ward when he went from um, was it Leeds that he left. Yeah, he was Leeds. Leeds and Burnley, wasn't it? Was it Burnley as well? I think it was when Leeds signed them, possibly. Yeah. And my dad texted me. Um, I'm sh- nope, he's gone. Oh. He's had the- What's this bit? Dave, do you want to pick it up? Yeah. Um, yeah Kevin Campbell there. I think that record, when, in terms of the amount he scored, like one in three, I, I just... Um, I throw that to one side personally because given the amount of shite we were in back then, one one in three for us is actually pretty good when you, you yeah. think back to those days. Mm-hmm. Um I'd throw him behind the yak and possibly throw him behind Andy Johnson as well. So I'm gonna say fourth. Um 
It was it, it, oh, and obviously Lukaku first. Um, in terms of a competition in and around him, there's not many to pick from, is there really? Um, I'm, I mean, I'm trying to think of like you. You probably throw Coffee in there as well, Les. Yeah, Coffee. Coffee was a funny one. He'd always he'd the ninety nine goals. Like, I'll never forget the ninety nine. Oh, it's horrible, that isn't it? I mean, he was he was a cracking striker, um, but he always seemed to score like a couple of goals in like a three or four one win. Mm-hmm. But I don't yeah. remember him really getting you know like the one nil wins and that. He probably did. Remember yeah, a fella though, mate. That that that's been a clever striker. That having, having a great having a great record and just your goals don't even matter. That's doing it on the sly has been like an easy. Yeah. That's an easy career for you, that isn't it? <laughs> It must wreck us out that we must hate Mike Walker for some reason. Would, would you class Stephen Naismith in that category as a striker? He's not a striker, or because I, I personally like, I, I thought he was brilliant. Um, if I think people did him a disservice in terms of like saying, oh, he just works really hard and he's not really that good, I, I thought he was much better than that. <laughs> but then I don't know if you'd include him in the in the striker category. Yeah, for me, he doesn't seem to fit in that sort of category, but he was a hell of a finisher <laughs> and a really good player. Um, I don't think I've ever just seen go, Just going back on Matt there with, with Sahar, it, it, uh, he's spot on what he said there, the type of player that we don't get. Um, and also, I thought we he didn't get as injured. I know we did considerably amount of injuries, but he didn't get as injured as I thought he would. Because that's ultimately why we've ended up with that sort of player. Um, it's ultimately yeah. why we, we ended up with United players, is because they've either gone shite or they're injured all the time. Um, but he sort of booked that that trend, didn't he really? Um scored some great goals for us. FA Cup goal as well. You know, don't need to talk about the rest of that with his bell end who was in goal, but um <laughs> always seems to th- get thrown into this conversation, doesn't he? But yeah, I I liked them. I think was it when we beat Blackpool at home? Was it him who scored four? Got four, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um I think Beckford got the other one really. Beckford's one season as well, by the way. I he was one handy was- player. I was fuming when we sold him, you know, because he I think was one and two. Don't recognise strikers, didn't they? Yeah, exactly. I just, I just remember he was getting, we were going to bin him, weren't he? Because he turned up late to, I think it was a home against Bolton in a League Cup game, and the players are out there training. You just see him walking along from, from the park end to the changing rooms. You just see him casually strolling down there. You just imagine Moyes ready to chin him in, in, in the tunnel. Yeah. He- he didn't say Tardin as well, did he, Moyes? Yeah. Um, Matt, what were you saying about Campbell? Before oh, no, sorry. It was, it was just Chris Wood. Um, oh, when sorry, he yeah. the Leeds in the Championship. Like, my dad, one of his workmates, who we supported a championship, championship club at the time, like, was going on about him week on week. And he just texted me saying, we should have signed him, handy player. And every single time he kept popping up and scoring goals and moving up the league and everything like that. My dad was just like, told you, told you, told you. <laughs> But I mean, that list of strikers that I mentioned, I think I missed an obvious <laughs> one unless you mentioned it when I kicked myself out. But um, second to Rom is obviously for Charleston because he is yeah, and was a centre forward. Yeah. So yeah, Rom, yeah, Richarlison, yeah. uh, Yakubu, Kevin Campbell, and then about 12 players, and then Duncan Ferguson. Yeah, seems fair enough. Um, but we've got some good. Very topical. Uh, the cup replay news. Uh, but the fact that they're getting scrapped, we won't go into that now, but we might talk about it on the show in the week or something, because I, do, I just think it's, a, it's not good for the game, is it? Uh, Robert asked, what's the best Everton Cup replay? And is scrapping replay is a good thing? Okay, so maybe we will touch on it a little bit. What's the best Everton Cup replay? There are two against Liverpool, I can think of straight away. Um, obviously, the four-all and uh, the tic tac advert one. Yeah, that's that's the answer, isn't it? It's got to be. Yeah, score on a late like injury time winner, extra time winner against them. Doesn't happen, does it? No. Yeah, yeah, but he says no. he's writing out the penalty takers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember anything where we've actually had a replay. Where, oh, we've had some stinkers uh, like Chelsea. The uh, the high singer shove. Yeah. Was that a replay? Free kick. Yeah, yeah. Went to penalties, didn't it? Oh, of course it did, yeah. Yeah, with the cream kit. Yeah. What a kit that was. Oh, yeah, was, yeah. We were talking about this the other week, weren't we? How nice that kit was. And it was um, Lecoq Sportif, wasn't it, as well? Yeah. Yeah, it was. They did a decent job for the season, didn't they? Well, no, they didn't, apart from the bib. The bib one was atrocious. Yeah, it was like a sports bra, that one, wasn't 
It was just mad. I don't know if he's tall with mad, was it? I like him. He's a well-built the... fella, and it looked like a bra. <laughs> we had the... Um, the bib was in, like, a, a triangle, wasn't it? And then, yeah. it, like, it cut off before the bottom part of it. It just looked ridiculous. Oh, yeah, it, it was like a shocking combination of the two mid-80s yeah. kits. It was grim. Dreadful, yeah, yeah. it was. Um, Foxy, you got any... I can't think of any replay. No, I was, I was just thinking the Liverpool one. So, the, was the 4 4? Was that a replay? Yeah. Was it? What? And then there's another replay because he used to do replay, repeat. Yeah, just go around, didn't they? 1 0. Yeah, yeah, what's it? Watson. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that Diane Gosling one, I don't know if you guys were there, but I was yeah. watching it on TV. So, I had the whole advert thing and the ball goes in, <laughs> goes to an advert. <laughs> 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 And oh, everyone's so, so mad. You're like, what? Did it, did it cut off as the cross was going into the box? Yeah. And yeah, the yeah. The whips it, 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 it cut off with the cross. Because it was like the 119th minute or something, I think. So it cut off as the cross came in, went to whatever advert it was. And then you didn't really expect us to score because we don't score. <laughs> it's just like surprise when it go back on and Dan Gosling celebrating. And it's, it's, it's quite nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's getting beaten, is it? <clears throat> at all. Was it, uh, Steve... you know the, the, the lovely thing about that as well was the way it went in? Because it, it, it was the right back to play for them. It began with an A. Ah, below it, was it? Him or Aurelio? Aurelio? Yeah, in one of them two. One, one of them two. Yeah. It hit his Spaniards. hand. It hit his hand and then hit skirt, <laughs> skirt all his leg and then just went into the top corner. If he didn't do that, I think it would have been a, a, an easy save for Reina to make. But the fact that it was a snide goal that went in and like the Dan Gosling turned into be a prick as well. I, I just think there's a good story around that. I was watching, you know what? It's so it's so funny we were talking about that in terms of replays. So obviously that's been in the news. And um it was I can't remember what channel I seen it on it. It's had like, you know, the great replays and years gone by. And it, there was that and um I was finding out what he does now. And he's thirty four years old at Notts County. Dan Gosling's 34. Yeah, 34. Not too old than that, but yeah. I know, mate. Feel, feel, uh, I, just, I, can't, I don't know if it is oh, true. Sorry. Someone, Marty, I know you're right by your computer there, mate. Check out that. I'm pretty certain he's 34. Sounds about right because it was 14 yeah. years ago. So, he scored when yeah, he was no, 19. 15 years yeah. ago. He scored yeah, when he was 19, 19 yeah. when he scored against Oh, yeah, Newcastle. I suppose so. Bloody hell. Yeah, remember, 34. Him, not, remember him at Newcastle as well? He just couldn't run. I remember he, he played. I was like, what, what, what can he do? He couldn't do anything. Played about 12 games for us as well. <laughs> but you know, Makes it what, even that, better, doesn't it, I suppose? Yeah. The maddest, the maddest thing about that goal is the fact that there was five or six Liverpool players in the box and Danny Gosling and Shandy van der Meijer put it on his toe. Yeah. Unbelievable <laughs> pass. That's not so outrageous, well. wasn't it? It just felt mad that, like, how, how shit, because I think Carragher was playing as well, wasn't he? Um, and, like, they have, like, them four defenders there that Matt talks about. Like, when he goes to his foot, it's like they all run in the one direction like it was a dance. And then he realises he's putting it back onto his right foot and then puts it in the other. And they're all like, looking at each other, like, what have we just done there? Like, it was like all four of them in a line ran towards this where their fans are. And then he just decides to go the other way. But he says he's been doing nothing in training there, like he really says to the centre back, right? You're all, you're, all, you're all on a rope. So, whatever one moves, the other goes. And you see the other goes yeah. Um. So we'll go to oh here's a good one from Phil because uh, this night was definitely one of them or well, that night was definitely one of them. Uh, what's the most drunk you've ever been at a match? I was mortally bad <laughs> definitely <laughs> after that derby. Um, Barbar Jinx said a Sunderland midweek league cup match took the day off work to sort some bits. Nate phoned and we talked ourselves into getting on the ale at midday. Bumped into a load of Mackhams in town and got plastered with them. Don't remember the game or getting home. Which is pretty much what it's all about, really, isn't it? Good stuff. <laughs> Matt, any any that stand out? <laughs> um, our first Friday night game when they brought that back against Palace. And I took a half day from work. We had a team meeting at lunchtime where we all got Domino's pizzas. So I had a load of pizza and then jumped the train back. Went out on county with my dad. We went to Frost's and he got himself a burger and he said, are you getting any food? I was like, no, no, I've only just had some pizza. And he was like, trust me, get some food. I was like, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. And I spent the game bouncing between falling asleep and then waking up and hurling abuse at Yannick Balassi. <laughs> to this day, I can't remember which team he was even playing for. <laughs> <It was just> <laughs> <last>. <laughs> 
yeah, that was <laughs> it. And but I don't even remember what the score was. Don't remember any of the game. I had a nice little snooze. Woke up, but I, I was on it from well, what time was kickoff? Quarter to eight. So I must have been on it from about one o'clock until kickoff. Didn't yeah, have that on in the, the ground, <clears throat> but. There's something yeah. about Friday games, isn't there? Because the two good Friday, I think it was a good Friday, it was, it was obviously the Derby good Friday where the whole ground was pissed. Um, and then there was, I think, I think we played Spurs on a good Friday as well. And I think we were 3-1 up at our time. And I was saying... Wasn't the at... United game in 2005, wasn't that a Friday? I don't know, I can't remember. Was it I, was probably, I, wasn't, I wasn't at it, like, but... Oh, I was, I... In my head, I had that one where Fellaini scores on the opening day because that was definitely a Monday night. That, that was a Monday night, yeah. Yeah. I remember that other one, though. But yeah, that, that Spurs one was 3 1 up at half time, and I was saying to everyone around me, do you know what? We got another one early in the second half here, make it 3 1, we'll be sound. Everyone was like, it is 3 1. No, that's, that's not. That's not. <laughs> that's arguing with everyone. That didn't happen. Foxy. Um, most of the summer drive, so I can't drink and I have to kind of suffer this sober, which is hard. Um, but there was a Friday night game at the end of the season against Burnley. I don't remember the year. I don't really remember the score, but it was right at the end of the season. The main reason I remember it is I went was staying in Liverpool with my wife, Flynn, and um, we were so pissed we couldn't work out how to get out of Goodison and back into town. So so we had phones on, so we could have walked to the train station. We could have got like, an Uber or a taxi. We couldn't work that out. We ended up walking back into town. And we're just like walking left Goodison and we'll walk uh, the radio tower. So we're just following that as our like North Star. <laughs> <laughs> and we're too pissed to work it out. We were kind of hoping a taxi might go past us, but that time of night, nothing came past us. But it was it's... summerish, so it wasn't too dark and it was all right. But it's like... Yeah, it's a funny thing to walk back into town, is it? Because it's not, it's not that far. It took us a long time, this. But it, feel, but it feels it <laughs> when you're doing it. I don't think we went. Any, it never seems yeah. to get any closer until you actually get to town. Yeah, I'm not sure we went that direct either. <laughs> <laughs> we lost sight of the tower while we were there. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dave, you got any advance on the Fellaini one, or was that was that the one? No, oh, no, no. I, I, the, the quick one, really sad one, was when we won two 0 with Richardson scoring in COVID. I got destroyed in our house, and I mean destroyed. I was sleeping with the cat on my head. I had, I had a kebab in my hand, a full kebab that I was like, woke up and was like, why has nobody had this kebab? I had like a um, garlic bread next to me and I was just had no keks on. And I had, like, <laughs> no, but the, thing, the thing is, that's a rule of garlic you, bread, isn't it? You've had a, you've had a, you've had a <laughs> with your missus and all that. She weren't even in. She was working nights and was in the house. Something I was like, what has gone on in this? <laughs> on my own when we got home because I was working. Watched it and uh, nearly got sacked in, in Salford with the BBC. Just got in the car like I was dead excited to get home and just have just whatever we had in the fridge and, and, and in the cupboards to drink. And I just like put a concoction together and just started swinging it back. And there was a video of me singing, I filmed myself singing Elvis songs for some reason. <laughs> um, I'm still, I think I've still got that on my phone. But the, the, other, the other one, the main one, was uh, the semi final when uh, Martial scored in the last minute. And um, I was staying basically in what can only be described as a hostel that we paid a lot of money for. I don't know if I remember saying this on, on, on the pods in the past, but it was like sleeping on a piece of wood. Oh, yeah, I remember. When, when, when we lost, yeah, do you remember me saying this? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, what a nice story, this one. Um, <laughs> and yeah, get, get getting back to that hotel slash. Um, at someone's house. I, I don't even know it. Like we paid eighty quid for the night, and I couldn't believe it. I just could not believe it. And like I said, I, I think I remember telling you, got up as early as possible. I wanted to hit the motorway and get home as soon as I possibly could because that that game, that game was just painful. Because with the amount of chances we had to win that game, Lukaku missed the pen, and uh, we got back into it through an own goal um, caused by De La Feu. When Martial scores that, I was like, ah. Oh, Felt like honestly, I was like, I can't be. I want to be home right now. I want to just want to be. I don't want. So, the answer was going to get absolutely destroyed and forget about the game. <laughs> yeah, I was I was horribly drunk at that one, but before the game, I just yeah. I just went nuts on the ale before and for some reason. Yeah. The thing is that I didn't get the chance to go to. I don't know where the last <laughs> did was when we went through to the final on pens. I think it's actually the anniversary today, isn't it? 
when when we beat oh, the seven, yes. Yeah. yeah. Stinker of a game <laughs> as well, that. But to go through on pens against them. Something else. James Ward, what a fella. Oh, yeah. We go for the quadruple yeah. that, that season, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, time for a couple from Maggie. She's back. Uh, Matt, have you got any political soapbox? 30 seconds? Um, I can't really think what's happened this week. Everything's just shit, isn't it? It's just consistently shit. It's hard to keep up with the latest thing. Oh, all this nonsense about people getting sick and not going to work. Like, If, if you look at the actual totality of time spent off work sick in this country, it works out to something like 14 minutes per day per person. Which is like what you spend having a shite and a cup of coffee. So who cares? <laughs> it's not going to save the economy. No. Grow up. You're right. There so you go. Have less shites. And then you've got you've got that balloon who looks like Wurzel Gummidge with turkey teeth, saying we can't exploit workers as we as much as we'd like to, or something. I'm paraphrasing a bit there, but he needs volume everywhere as well. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Fever the revolution. Let's get it going. Um. Uh, if you well. On a similar subject, if you stare into the abyss, what stares back at you? Dwight McNeil. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Next. Um, what's the worst way you've ever seen someone eat their footy scram? Maggie said, two story, saw someone drop his fork from his curry and fried rice. So we proceeded to raise the tray to his mouth and eat it like a dog. I've, 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 seen, sim- I've seen similar with um, a hot dog. Where someone's dropped it, being absolutely devastated because they hadn't touched it, but you know because it's in the the, the sausage in the bun, he just picked the bun up with both hands and skipped it up and ate it, and then got some of the got some of the onions that was on the bread and just skipped it up and put it on top of that. So the only thing in the end that was missing was the bread that touched the floor, and I was quite <laughs> impressed after that. To be honest, with you, I thought how desperate yeah. are you to have that sausage, mate? Quite was also like, I mean, if you paid about ten quid for a rollover in Goodison, you don't want to like. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't want to let that go easily, do you? You need your value there. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm trying to think. I've seen some terrible things in the chippy, but not people getting it. Just like the orders that you put in, like that. I'm not a fan of gravy on fish. So I'll get my head around that. Well, I don't get started yeah. on gravy, mate, because I'm not a fan of gravy. Well, I don't mind gravy on a. Sunday roast, but what were we talking about with gravy starts to get a bit heated, didn't it? When we were talking yeah, about we're, we're not we're not going to go back into KFC gravy day. No, no. Um, Foxy, I, I'm going to go a bit tangent here, but right, it's all fine. Um, so I have this thing called misophonia. So that's like people eating, making noises, like just, you know how something's like um, fingernails on chalkboards or <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, it's yeah. just send you like that. Make you cringe. Poly- yeah, yeah, not polystyrene mean, yeah. coming out of a box. Yeah. yeah. So I, I never watch anyone eat anything. I I, I realised I was at my mum's a few weeks ago. And this is a complete tangent. And she's quite a noisy eater, so she'll like slurp her tea in the cereal and stuff. Is that... Okay. I'm hoping you got about eight episodes here, you know, like... I'm hoping that that is still recorded, to be honest. <laughs> so yeah, it was still to... recording until literally just then, so... All right. But anyway, Fox, you were saying about going... To yeah, the- yeah. So, I mean, back to the football thing. I, I, I actively avoid in my weirdness any form of eating with anyone like even to the point with my kids at home the kid that sat on my left which must be my stronger hearing ear <laughs> generally gets a volley of abuse of being a noise eater everyone else around the table is fine so like the kids circulate around the room to be further away from me um that's <laughs> like giving abuse for noise eating but oh, the, like yeah it's a weird thing does anyone else have that or recognize it as you know a... what it is it incest in the foibles like that yeah i mean at christmas we went to um Toby Carvery for the two Christmases before last and one was COVID so you like it was weird going up to the buffet and you had to have like gloves on and everything to get your stuff mm. and ask people for your stuff it was really weird but um, yeah I have I have an issue when it sounds quite weird this but you you know when you like so obviously my wife has been with her like 15 years now I know how she eats which sounds really really weird yeah, yeah, yeah. but other people in family that you don't really see until Christmas. You're sitting there thinking, I remember he spat all this food <laughs> for the week. I'm not sitting by him. Do you know what I mean? And I'll yeah. sit there going through the list thinking, he was a bit of a twat with that fucking bar of Mars bar over the other, the other year. Do you know what I mean? And somebody else was eating something really badly and I'll, I'll try and manoeuvre myself <laughs> around the massive <laughs> table to make sure they're not in either in my eye line 
and I absolutely cannot hear them because the music's too loud. So, so I'd, uh, I, I could tell you exactly. So I've got a family, I know, with siblings and partners and kids, 15 of them. I could tell you exactly how each of them eat. <laughs> Where I sit. <laughs> and my wife had a cup of teeth out and she quite liked cereal. And she had a phase of like eating cornflakes, whatever, in the morning. And she'd get them stuck with the gap in the teeth. were. <laughs> And I, I, I literally couldn't be in the room. <laughs> so you yeah, basically got you, a, yes, sorry, go. you basically got a when, when people get the milk. On there. I'm <laughs> sorry, I was just going to say when when people I I can't stand people having um, a bowl of cereal with loads of milk sitting by you. Yeah, because you can't get the milk in your mouth without. Oh no! And yeah. I just I just think like that that milk that's gone back into the bowl has touched you. So yeah. it, it does like make me think I'm gonna go and sit somewhere else. I am I am I the only one who lets the milk run off my spoon while I'm eating cereal and then just drink it at the end. Yeah, I eat cereal like a monster. I yeah, yeah. I'm terrible. I'm noisy and like we we would have issues every breakfast less. That, that's a bit. good technique. <laughs> that is a good Personally, technique. Like drain I, it a bit and then Yeah, that's it. I I love milk so what and I love the cereal to be really um soft. Every single one. Like I had um shed the week before. And I waited for it to go completely soft, that like you know, Mushy. ripped apart. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I get something like um, I don't know what have we got in there, like cornflakes or um, crunchy nut cornflakes, whatever. And I'd pour it with milk to make sure it got really, really soft. And then I'd like I'd drink as much milk out of the bowl as I could. So the nice soft cornflakes would be lovely and dry, but soft. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah. obviously. There's there's one for you there, folks. You know if you're science, you're spitting, yeah. if you're spitting out milk and doing everyone's heads around you, making people sick by milk going over your face. Do it that way. Drink, I'll feed it back. Drink the I'll milk out of your bottle first, <laughs> then get your spoon and do what you want. I've just thought of a funny one. People who eat burgers upside down, it makes sense because when you if you put the burger upside down on the plate and then you pick it up, it's the right way around when you bite into it and you put it That's down. That's a good shout. I, I I get that. If you, but also, down, I, if you put the bag down the right side up, oh no, it's still. Does, does oh, it's right. No, you're right. I, I, I think you're right there because the bit that gets me with that is when you eat a bag normally as it is, the, the top part of the bread gets stuck at the top of your mouth. You know what I mean? Sometimes <laughs> find it difficult. But if you go the other way, I think it makes sense because that, that bit of bread's quite flat. I don't know what I'm talking about here. But anyway, <laughs> I had a big I had a big Mac the other day when I came home from the hospital. And what I've started doing is taking the top uh, patty off and putting it underneath the middle bread, scrapping the top one. So I've got like a, just like a normal bag without the bread in the middle, to be honest with you. But with all the sauce and onions in the middle, so it's miles better. Ooh. And yeah, I don't I'm not a fan of having like too much bread. On anything I eat, really, like Subway. Subway normally, I'll like take off one top of it or the bottom half of it. I can't yeah, I was gonna say all that bread. If you're not into bread, Subway is probably not the gaffer you. Really. No, it's not. <laughs> um, back back to Red Hot Soccer chat. Um, Stephen, rhetorical question: How have we managed to sign eighteen players who can't pass a ball between them? Good question. Our team. Oh God, yeah. What's the question again? Say it again. How have we managed to sign eighteen players who can't pass a ball between them? Eighteen, as in we've signed the ones, all the ones we've got now. I think he's just sign. saying basically, what? Why can't any players pass the ball? No, no, it is, it is something that I, um, I struggle to get my head around that we don't have anybody that's decent. Um, I know, I know, we could sit here all night talking about well, he was half decent, he was okay. Probably have a conversation about Onana for the rest of the season, couldn't we? But in in general. Everybody's had a really shit game, and most of them has been multiple shit games as well. I even think when, the even when we won them, yeah. The, the thing for me, it's not it's not just the passing, and this was like this was pretty stark against Chelsea as well. But it's been an ongoing theme all season. And I think I said that on an earlier mailbag or one of the shows earlier this season, and a lot of people were giving me stick in the comments. But the amount of 50 50s we lose mm. is pathetic. So it's like the challenges are just so weak. That the opposition will a lot of the time pull away with the ball. Now I know there's a lot of averages to all this and things like that that you're not going to win every 50-50, but a couple would be nice. They just, I don't know, they're just, they're just not very good, and I don't think there's much desire with them, is there? Really, you know, as you ironically, say, ironically, it's Sean Dyshard as well, who's renowned for doing that. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Where you see these and training lads? Why we're not going to kick each other, are we? Clearly not. 
Foxy, sorry, go on. Yeah, no, the thing that gets me, because we don't really attack that much, or have that many opportunities, is the amount of time we're offside. So to actually get the ball in that position, we got some kind of breaking pass a defender. Yeah. That Burnley game, I think we had 10 offsides. And, like, so many of them were basically look across the line. That, um, that better one. That, yeah. It's just, he was looking across the line against Chelsea and still. Yeah, it was poor. So the offside thing for me. Also throw-ins. Like, why can no one take a throw-in in our team and just, like, lump it in the box? The most disappointing thing about Godfrey, Ben Godfrey, is he can't take a long throw-in. Someone of his build and size and athleticism surely can just launch it in the box. Yeah. But no one can. Like, why yeah. can't we do that? So, yeah, he like, should, he should at least team. good for that, shouldn't he, Godfrey? Yeah. At least. Yeah, and yeah. you've got a nine-foot-tall shitter who can't kick a ball. The only, the, only thing, the, only, the only thing he can do is head it. Yeah. You know what I mean? He just fucking launch one of his heads off, yeah. it bounces off, and he doesn't know. I love it when Dave pulls out shit head. <laughs> <laughs> no, if it's all I'm, shit I'm convinced. I'm convinced, you know, he tried that overhead kick the other night. He hit that himself in the stuff. face. He hit himself in the face with the overhead <laughs> attempt. It was like that meme everyone used, you know, where Tyson Fury punches himself in the face. Yeah. It was like that, mate. I swear. Oh, did, did he knee himself in the face? No, no, his foot. His foot went Jesus. in the face. He sat over at it and like it's, it's, it's weird that the position of his body he kept his head in the air <laughs> and obviously it was like his foot going towards the ball completely missed it and I swear it hits him in the nose. I bet he's still a beautiful for it. any thoughts on this? Only ever on goal. Have we got him? He's one piece of shit, him, isn't he? He's fucking <laughs> <awful him. laughs> I've, I've got no thoughts really, to be honest. Um, we can't pass the ball sometimes. <laughs> We've only got the second worst pass percentage in the league. Have we? Who's, the, who's worst? Best be Sheffield United or something like that. It is, yeah. It is. It is. And for the team that never attacks, we're still 11th for XG. So we are making chances. We just can't put them away. Should make more. Just on Sheffield United, it's good to see Daniel Jefferson back in training, isn't it? <laughs> After being on load at Burton Albion for a couple of years, he's back in who Sheffield United and back in training. When's he Daniel playing Jefferson. Us? Is he out? Yeah? <laughs> What's it? Three weeks away till that game. So that'll be good. Yeah, he'll be he'll be well for that. His second goal. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? I'm 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 quitting. I'm quitting football. Like watching it and the blue room. Not anyone else can have it if they want it. If that with Bernie scores a goal, mate. I uh, do you know what? I go as far as saying I like Tim Howard more than him. He's one little twat. That fella. You can tell he's proper ETL little gobshite. He wears tiny, tiny um, shinies as well. Goes on the pitch like he's a decent player. He's an absolute twat. Him, I did him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel Jemison, like just just a bit back up on him. So twenty twenty, he played twenty eight times. <clears throat> I scored two. Amazing. I thought we was only goal. He scored two. Yeah. Since then, twenty 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 one on loan at Chorley. Uh, twenty one twenty two on loan at Burton. And then there's actually no stats for him after that. So I don't know. He must have been injured. I guess. At uh, I've been an but he's back in training, just ready to get his third goal in his 29th <laughs> top flight game. Good times. Um, right. Oh, another one from this as well from Stephen. Uh, how many points do you think we get from now until the end of the season? And will it be enough? That's the big question, isn't it? <laughs> Matt, I, Matt, I reckon you're going to be the most optimistic out of all of us here. What do you reckon? Seven. Seven. I thought seven, as Matt was thinking. Eight. Where's the extra one? Um, Luton away? Yeah, that's a I, that's a draw. We draw at Luton to keep us up. I worked this out two weeks ago. I'll take it. And they're, they're absolutely crap. They're, they're not no. surviving now. Uh, they, they, they surely can't beat us three times in a season. <laughs> I can't happen. <laughs> If, oh, if we... I've said it, no, haven't I? I've said it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> no, but seriously, since, since their star striker got injured, I think they've picked up like half the points we have. And we've won one game in 15 yeah. in that time. What a plucky so, little team, though, eh? Oh, yeah. There's like, there's you know, a lot about them or whatever Jack Carlisle says, yeah. <laughs> so, no, let's be honest. Have so a go. Matt, would you take four from the next three? Um, Nah, we need six from the next three. Six, okay. But I think we'll get seven. I, I seven. 
I think we're getting something in the derby. I honestly do. Uh, they they look shot. They do. They look shot. Like mentally, it's uh, they dis- they completely disintegrated mentally. Do I need to get the time for Everton Mimos? Mm, time for Fulham. Just just on that, I will be watching that from uh, some boozer in Brighton. So if anyone's got any recommendations of pubs in Brighton to watch the toffees in, I'd like to hear them. Just go to the cliffs like we were that day, Matt. Just yeah, I might, I might just do that. Well, the the, the literal cliffs, so... There's got to be that... a boozer out there with some little kid about to be run over. There's got to be that going on down there. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to nine points. I think I think we'll lose to Luton. Um, but I think we'll beat Forest, Sheffield United and Brentford. And I think that'll be enough. And I think it'll be Forest that go. Oh, interesting. Um, I and I'll repeat how many again. games you've got here, you know. Well, um, who's the away you've got left? When I said seven, I was Lose going off five Arsenal. games. <laughs> We're about seven. We're about seven. Yeah. Well, Ars- yeah. Arsenal doesn't count, does it? So it's five. Yeah, yeah, four, two. Home, four homes, yeah. two away. So Luton and Arsenal, I, I'm, I'm discounting them and the shite. So I'm saying that the, the, the other three home games will take nine from that and that'll be okay. You're, you're still thinking about Ross Barkley, aren't you, Dave? I've, kept, I've repeated it. I've repeated you're convinced. it. convinced. Ross Barkley is in this narrative. He's in this story somehow. I'm not saying that's because he scores a winner against us, which probably will be the case. But something Sean Barkley, Sean Barkley, Sean Dice, fucking Dice Barkley, whatever. Ross Barkley will have something to do in Everton's story to stay in the Premier League. Three words. Piss off, Ross. Um, <laughs> You'll be Laura. I mean, you come to, look, we'll get him back in the summer. Watch. People want him back. Uh, let's move on to one from Laura before we get into the Ross Barkley discourse. Uh, nine years ago, she bumped into your Oviedo at the drinks machine in Nando's Liverpool one. What's the best place you've bumped into an Everton player? And where was it? Dave, in a uh, non-work capacity, by the way. A non-work capacity. Non-work, non-work capacity. capacity. Um, oh, non-work. I'll let you think, Foxy. You got anything? Yeah, I've not. No, I've met some of the other teams players, but not any of ours. Huh? Any interesting ones from other? Well, I met I met um Bobby Robson outside uh, the Dell before Everton beat Southampton four three in about nineteen ninety one. So he's England manager at the time. So that yeah. was quite nice. Yeah. Um. Jack Charlton was there at the same time. Wow. Bit weird. Maybe they just hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Matt? Um, best place I've met Everton players, the Bradwell. Definitely. That's 85 lads. Yeah. So they were in um, doing a bit of filming. I think they've got some thing coming out. Um, it might be part of the FA Cup coverage because it's 40 years since 84. Um, so they're all in there. And then they all got off for food. Normally what they do is they'll go out for a drink and then go off somewhere for food and then all peter out and disappear. I just popped in for a pint after work. Didn't expect them to all pile back in again. Completely rinsed. And yeah, just spent a good few hours with them. And uh, Alan Harper decided I was his best mate because I helped him stagger back to the bar after nearly falling into one of the cells. Um, One of the lads had to pour Chidi into a taxi. Because he completely stacked it. And uh, Tricky Chev is the most cutting, sarcastic man I've ever met. And it was an absolute delight to be rinsed by him. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing him at Belfield when I was a kid. And even then, as a kid, I kind of got that. It wasn't it wasn't like a, an offhand standoffishness, but there was something there that was a bit like, you're not quite as friendly as the rest of you. But if you didn't say it bad or anything like that, you just something so I know exactly what you mean there. Um, just on Alan Harper, it's got to be one of my favourite Everton nicknames because uh, his nickname was Mooncat. If anyone's ever, if anyone's not seen Mooncat, it was a kids TV program in the eighties. Look it up. Alan Harper is Mooncat. Um, Dave. Yeah, I've, I've, I remember one now. This this is really random. So um, Adi Akinbai. Remember the, the Leicester striker who just like he ripped his top off one time and looked like Mr. Universe. Um he uh, I met him at the snooker in Blackpool and he was sitting in front of me and I remember next to me, mate, like you know, you know when you see someone you think I'm almost certain it's him. So I whispered like I was like, sure he's like that, that striker who played for Leicester. Couldn't think of his name at the time. And he goes, Oh yeah, yeah. 
I said it's that it's that one, isn't it? That he, he scored it's like he wasn't great at Leicester. I think he was woeful at Leicester. That's why he just ripped his top off when he scored his only goal or whatever it was in eighty five games. And I said, "Oh yeah, it's that Adi I can buy." And he turns around. I was like, "Oh shit, what have I done here?" And he just said, "Hi, you mate, you're okay." And he's really nice as fella you could ever meet. But I think he was just like, it, one of us was going to be embarrassed. It was either him or me. Do you know what I mean? For me saying that. Oh, I don't know who he is. Yeah, him thinking, yeah, I was that shit that he probably doesn't know who I am. So I think just just out of that, he just like decided to be, yeah, I am, mate. Yeah, I am. I think I can buy. He didn't go as far as saying do you want an autograph, but he just shook me hand and I said that you're enjoying the snook. And he went, oh yeah, yeah, I'm having a great night, mate. And then just turned around, carry on watching Ronnie O'Sullivan. There you go. That's all he wants, Eddie. So no, yeah. no lengthy stop and chat. Yeah, good stuff. I saw John Collins and Safeway when I worked there on the. Chilled me style, I think. He was dressed all in black. Very, very milk tray. Um, and I saw Stu McCall in Orlando Airport in about 92 or 93. Didn't approach him, didn't speak to him. Too, uh, too shy for all that. Uh, Mike How was leathered up. was he? <laughs> yeah. And do you know what I didn't see? But he, must, he probably was. That's one of the greatest ever football videos, isn't it? Him falling off a car in Bradford's uh, <laughs> promotion <laughs> celebrations. Oh, I did see um, I did see Rio Ferdinand and Selfridges in the um, Trafford Centre. Oh, I saw Thierry Henry in Night Town in London. Oh, mate, you must have gone over to him. No, God, no. You never went over to him? No. Well, with, with Rio Ferdinand, I was um, with my sister at the time, and it, uh, that, oh, that Trafford Centre is always chocker. This is going back to, must have been just after he went there, after Leeds, but he had an entourage that was ridiculous. He was walking around with the worst coloured suit you've ever seen, like this bright cream suit. And you're like, do you know what, mate? You probably don't want to be spotted, but you're wearing the worst thing that would ever, you know, be the worst thing that you put on if you didn't want to be spotted. And, mate, I'm not joking. It was like, I remember when I when I went to work with, I said work with him, uh, I went to see Floyd Mayweather, and he was exactly the same. He had like, there must have been about 14 lads, big, beefy lads around them. I was thinking, sort of ironically, do that when you're a boxer. But with, with with Rio Ferdinand, he had so many lads around. I was thinking, why on earth does Rio Ferdinand think he needs that sort of protection when he's just signed for Man United and going to the store, to the, the shopping centre in Manchester? Is he thinking all the Leeds fans are going down there for the day? Just just mad. Yeah. Yeah, he does seem like the sort of fellow who'd love an entourage, though. And the early 2000s was the Wild West for Bath Bobber. So I can it's true, it was, yeah. Yeah. Um I, I've remembered another one. Just go ahead. I, I gave uh, Marcello Lippi a cuddle in the lift. What? <laughs> <laughs> you give him a cuddle? Yeah, I mean, inadvertently. I'd, so I'd love to uh, leave a hand in there, but now go on. <laughs> oh man, I need to hear this. Uh, I forgot about that. So it was, it was about 10, 12 years ago, I think, and I was in Abu Dhabi doing some work. Um and he got in the lift. And I was with a mate from work and I said, Can I get a photo? And he went, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. So I went to do the photo on a lift, like physically give him a cuddle. He's like, no, we'll do it outside. Physically give him a cuddle. Give him a cuddle. <laughs> well, I was, I was putting my arm around his shoulder, just kind of like a cuddle. And then he's like, no, just no. Just going we'll up do... to him and don't touch him, like your arms around him. <laughs> Dave, I know you've given a lot of people a mental cuddle. Don't even say oh, that's right, mate. And he, was like, and he was like, no, we go outside the lift for the photo. I was like, yeah, 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 we'll do that. We'll do that. We won't, we won't do it in the actual lift itself. So we just followed him down to reception where he was going, you know. Yeah. Was... In the actual photo outside of the was there an arm round or was it? Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Not, not a cuddle though, because you get you get rested no. for that. Well, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> there is that coach escape yeah. there, Foxy. Do you know what? It's funny you say that because I've always wanted that like this has been something that say fantasy. It's something that I've thought would be really, really funny. Like, you know, just imagine when I met Adi Akinbay and I actually cuddled them. And like <laughs> I just I just want to know what the reaction would be. Do you know what I mean? Like, what do you think you're doing, mate? Or like, spots or something like that? Do you know what I mean? Just, just to see what he actually did. Um, I, I, like even when I, I told you ages ago, didn't I? When Franny Jeffers came into JJB and wanted me to get him discounts on a pair of boots when he was playing for Blackburn, um, <laughs> I just thought, like, you know, how, how would it be if I just ran up and say, you know, I'll give you that discount, mate, if you if you let me put you like if I can put you on my shoulders, just just something, just something mad and inappropriate, just something Quick. famous. Do you know what I mean? Work for it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Listen, mate, you're not getting your eighty, your twenty quid off those hundred quid pair of boots. 
your little bell end. <laughs> I love the way there's a little bit of abuse is never far away, is it, Dave? It's always isn't, he, though, what, isn't he a top little Oh, yeah. 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 Fox yeah. in the box. Um, Mike also met Stuart McCall at Children's World in Aintree. Uh, KJ Banksy, Nuno Valencia. With kids, though, we had kids with them. <laughs> Good question. Good question. Yeah, well. He's by himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, KJ Banksy, <laughs> Nuno Valencia pushing the pram around boots in Aintree. God, Aintree's the place to be. I've lost three years after he's left pram. There's no kid in the pram, <laughs> that's, though. That's the plot, plot twist. Oh, uh, Laura's mum bumped into Yakubu in boots on Church Street. Nice. So it looks like boots and or Aintree is the place to go. Everton player spotting. Uh, Sam. So Paul Rydell's in Ben's Chippy. What a shout that is. Uh, Laura also bumped into James Wallace in Nando's Liverpool 1. Didn't get a photo. And John Walters in Wagamore at Liverpool 1. Yeah. And Jack uh, Fellaini in Modo in Concert Square. Asked for a picture. He said five minutes. Came back from the bar and he'd fucked off. Oh no! Uh, classic, classic marijuana. Is, do you think that? though? When, do you think when that stuff like that, when when they go out, obviously they know they're going to get spotted, but then they have it in their mind that oh no, they've spotted me. I best get out of here. You, you walk around in public. Of course, that's going to happen, isn't it? And yeah. isn't John? Isn't Jonathan Walters a Tory? What he's from Wallasey. Wallasey Tory. Yeah, you're from there as well. You are, aren't you? No, I'm not from Wallasey. Look at his face. No offense to anyone from Wallasey, but I'm not from Wallasey. Look at his face. Look at his face. Um, right, we've got it. Last ten minutes, we'll finish on a couple of happy ones. Uh, J.K., what's your favourite thing about going to Goodison? He always loves coming coming from town up the hill and seeing Goodison letters above the park end up here. Foxy, you had that in reverse that mm. time, I think. Yeah, yeah. So I I, I walk from the Sammy. Park, car park and down, so kind of sit through. I think my favourite thing still, and I, I generally, because I don't have a season ticket, I go random places around the ground, is when you just go in the ground and see the ground from different angles. It's quite nice. So a bit from main stand up Gladys or Park End or whatever, just kind of seeing it from different aspects. Yeah. It's sentimental, isn't it? <laughs> no, it, it, it does though, isn't it? It's a, it's a completely different experience depending yeah. on what part of the ground. What I miss or what I used to love was when the ground just used to be open in the week. So okay. you, could all, you could always get in at the park end. You always like got the gates open there. There'd be no one knocking about. There was no training or nothing like that at, at the ground. I'm probably talking about mid-90s here, mid-late 90s maybe. But one of those gates at the park end was always open. And it was a few times you just walk in. You know, if I went over to get tickets or something, yeah. just walk in, just walk down the park end, walk down the main stand a little bit. You'd eventually like a steward would like Collier and tell you to get out. But actually going in there, like not on a match day with no one else in yeah. there, is is dead weird. It was lovely. It was so nice because you can yeah. you can properly appreciate the scale of it, and there's no noise. It's just you in there. Um, yeah, that was. Have you, have you ever done a stadium tour? Years ago, I need to do another one. Because that's quite weird as well. well. So you, you obviously do the behind the scenes thing, but to your point, when you're stood on the touchline and you're looking out, it's yeah, you get the size and. Yeah, whole thing. Yeah, it is. It is magic, like uh, Matt. I feel like I'm. I'm almost taking for granted these days because I, I can't Good really point. think of anything specific. Yeah, like the whole thing is just. <laughs> it's it's easy to get jaded about it, and like you know, a lot of people saying they don't enjoy going to the match anymore, and you know, a lot of people maybe skipping games or passing tickets on and that. But the fact that we support a team in the top, the you know, the oh, this week's evidence, not the top division of football in the world because <laughs> everyone's been knocked out. But one of the top divisions, the most lucrative division, and the fact that we can, you know, I can jump on a train five minutes from my door. I could leave my door right now and be at Goodison Park within about phew, half an hour. And I could go there every other week and watch the biggest soccer league on the planet with my own eyes. That's a privilege I'm never going to take for granted. And yeah. The ground it's itself, like probably, the, I've said this a lot, but the duff step on the upper Gladys. I yeah. just I, I just enjoy seeing people get caught by that for the first time, every single yeah. time. <laughs> Tell you what, mate, that, that's so poignant what you said there, you know, and it, it is something that's massively taken for granted. And when we get to the end of next season, when we've got a few games, like now, in a year's time, we've got this amount of games to go, I think that's when it starts hitting people home. Um because just to answer the question there, Les, <clears throat> my ticket's in the main stand um, in the corner towards you in, in the park end, you know, where the 
the pundits and all that are normally in the corner there, that part, that's where I am. So uh, I, when, I, when I was driving, I, I used to park. The, there's quite a, a big car park that's next to the school um, on the Bullen side. So I could easily park there, go past where the away fans are and walk just around the back of the park end to get to my seat. It's a really short walk. But now, well, recently, um, when I was going, I, I'd go right around the back, Goodison Road, Gladys Street, and to get to my seat, that walk from by the church to where me where I get in from the turnstiles where I am. And that's when you that's when you get that feeling to me. That's when you get that atmosphere, that might sound mad to other people, that smell as well. Like that it just feels like something's the anticipation. Do you know what I mean? That feeling in that little stroll around there. You see so many different fans. You see people coming in and out of the church, people going to get something from the chippy or whatever, the shop, the the bet the William Hill that's by there too. All of that, it's like that's been my life as a fan, you know. Um, and I know there's a lot of books written about this sort of thing these days. And no, I mean, if you go and look at, if you, if you, I'd, I'd suggest to anybody go and look at what Laura Dates does in in terms of the photography she does. I'd probably buy half of this collection at the end of, at the end of the season or next season because it it just it epitomizes what it is at Goodison, and I think that. You do take for granted Matt's spot on there. It's really easy to take it for granted, particularly when we're playing shit. Let's be honest, when the games have got like that and you're thinking, I, I can't wait for this to finish, or a lot of people do get off a little bit earlier, completely understandable. But now you start thinking as this clock is going down, the, I can't take this for granted anymore. You know, the, the, the people are seeing, even like every single part of it, the steps, there's so much of it. That we'll be sitting there in what eighteen months time when we're sitting in that new place, thinking, "Do you remember this? Do you remember that?" And it needs to be cherished because what we got left now, uh, what four games a year, what eighteen, no, nineteen, next twenty three games, twenty three league games left. Yeah. Um, that's, that's hopefully that's really hopefully nineteen goal. next season. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Premier League ones too. But it's um, it really comes back on you. I think it does that a lot for me. Um, so yeah, that that's sort of my bit that I like is just the the atmosphere you get before the game, and the atmosphere during the game is pure shite as well, which is sort of ironic. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was a we joke. Will... That was a joke. We... See, you're looking at Matt's <laughs> face there. That was a joke. <laughs> we will finish on the hot topic, which uh, in light of me saying it was probably the worst game we've been to, Chelsea. What's the best ever Everton game you've been to? Uh, I'll I'll kick off mine. I think was. Um, it probably should be the semi-final in 95, but I'm going to go with uh, 4-0 to Man United, Marco Silva in charge, um, just because it's always lovely to bat United. And I just remember, uh, I was sat there with my dad and the kids, and it's like one of the first games you can remember we all dropped and buzzed off, because all the goals in that game were brilliant. We battered Man United. They deserved it for wearing that pink kit. Just everything about it was good. So I think that's mine. Bit of an odd one, but yeah, Matt? Um, I know other people are going to say like memorable wins and that, but I, I know the context of it is not our proudest moment. But I think in years to come, the game I'm going to talk about with people, especially people who don't go to the match, is going to be the Palace game. Just because of the, the situation of it, the context of it, the fact that I was sat next to Keith, the fact that we swapped seats at half time to try and generate some good juju. Just that. all of that. Me, me telling them in the concourse the second goal for them is a bit Gary Ablett and him deciding there and then not to leave. Like, yeah, I did the same at half time. I, I I started recounting Wimbledon game to the kids, saying, uh, "Yeah, that it, it, the parallels with Wimbledon are pretty stark here, especially that second goal." Yeah, that that's a hell of a shout. That I think Matt, I think it's one of those ones we need to like don't be snobby about anymore because it was. You know, as you said, it's nothing to celebrate, but it was it was a great experience for anyone who was in the ground there. Yeah, and afterwards as well. Yeah. Like, being in the pub and, you know, well, it wasn't even a lock-in as such, was it? Because the door wasn't shut. It was just a case of mm. keep serving until we run out of ale. And then found out the week later that three of the players had actually turned up in the car about half an <laughs> hour after everyone had left. Because <laughs> <laughs> he saw all the clips on Twitter. <laughs> It's typical. 
Yeah, yeah, the one half an hour you're not in the pub. Unbelievable. Um, Foxy. You, I'm you. Um, so similar, but I kind of go the stretcher game. So I think I kind of refer to them as a, that blue smoke running at the end of the season. So I remember, I forget which was the first game. Was it Leeds? Was it Chelsea? Whichever the first one was. I remember taking Charlie to that. And as the first game, we had that kind of gathering of fans outside in the blue smoke. Um, it was Charlie's first game as well. I had him up on my shoulders outside Goodison. I remember like the press were coming outside. Leon Osman was next to me. Like taking videos for himself. So Leon Osmond will have a video of me holding Charlie as he's kind of <laughs> scanning around the stadium, and looking at everything. And I, th- I think that run of games, like the, these Chelsea, Brentford, Palace, whatever, which was a kind of end point. Because it kind of brought us together as a collective as well, because we, we've missed that for a while. Yeah. And under the better times, which we weren't, we just kind of fed up with everything. But we actually, for a period of time, we came together and it's impossible to repeat it. So once you do it once, we we had the we've had Benitez and he was shite and that was ridiculous. Now we got Lampard and he's like more one of us, and bringing the group together and finishing it off with the Palace at the end and being on the pitch. I think that's my best time as Everton fan. It's a little bit sad, <laughs> yeah, but it's like relative success to what we've known. I remember I was, I was in the um, Lower Bullens as well for the Palace game. And I I was talking to the guy next to me. He was in the sixties. And it got very emotional, didn't it, at the time? Like, whoever you were with, I didn't know this guy, I never met him before. And I said, for me, this is like winning something. And he's, like, experienced the teams of the 70s and yeah. 60s and the 80s, whatever. <laughs> and he looked at me and just hugged me. He's like, ah. <laughs> But everyone was just like, it was brilliant. Yeah, Albeit. it was. You're right. We don't get that much, do we? That's a good yeah. thing, as you said. You know, you can say what you like about Lampard as a manager. He was pretty shit, basically. But I think what the, the one thing he did do, and I don't know if it was just a, a massive circumstance, but for that run of games, you're right, everyone was like together. I would just yeah. say, you know, it's it, it was hard to repeat the season after and we didn't quite. I really don't think we can do it again this season. It won't be anything like that. But yeah, yeah, that's a good shot, Mum. Dave? Got to be good as in games. No, any? Oh, um, I've, I've got two. I won't surprise you or anybody else who's listened to us before, but it's Kanchelskis away against them when he scored the two he did. Um, being there for that as a kid was just I. it was what I thought like football was like every week so I remember going to games <laughs> even though we were away because it was, it was a time when you'd see like pockets of Everton fans all around it was what happened back in the day wasn't it See back yeah. in the day like it's not that far well it is approaching 30 years ago now isn't it which is really uh, really a concern but you used to see fans of the other club and be sort of dotted around it used yeah. to be quite easy to do that sort of thing um, and there wasn't murder when it happened like it is these days, you know. Um, but that when that happened, his second goal, first one's a crack and header when random people didn't know, don't need to know this, but that second one is when I thought he was actually magic when he scores that second goal, which David James should probably save. Um, but when he blasts that in and he just runs around with his arms out like that, um, that was like I remember saying to me dad at the time. We've never had a player like this, have we? Obviously, me being so young at the time. And he was like, and my dad started going, and when we were going on, my dad started rolling into all of the talks of like <laughs> the 80s when we won the league and all that. And probably if me and you go for a pint, Les, and go on a big, massive walk afterwards, all the sorts of stuff you'd start uh, talking to me about in the 80s and when we were like brilliant and stuff. Um, but I'll never, ever forget that moment. And the other one, quite quickly. Quite random one was when we drew two two away at Wolves and Richarlison scored twice. First goal he scored. I, this is I got really excited about Everton then because it was when we had Mina and when we had Gomez, um, and that was the first that's still game. first game. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. Remember we scored. We we went in front twice. Jaggy Elk was sent off ridiculously in the game. That away end at Wolves is really, really unique because you're on the whole side of the long set, side of the ground, um. But when Richarlison scored the second to put us 2-1 up, I, I, I remember looking around saying, and I seen um, Silva celebrating. Just give me that euphoria, that feeling mm. that, you know, Everton are back. The, there's a time when we were spending shit up money. We paid 50 million for Richarlison in the summer and I thought, this is going to be a magical season, this. And then it never happened. <laughs> you just got the Roy Hodgson meme there, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> 
Yeah, just on, just on Kachelsea's quickly, and then I'll read out everyone else's. I used um, Kachelsea scoring against Forest of Goodison as the gift for, um, you did. You for, did. for this. What a and, finish with his left foot, and he wasn't yeah, left foot. Yeah, but his celebration was great, wasn't it? Just, yeah. just arms out, dead baggy shirt, Bill. Jumps on whoever's near him as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, so The price you'd have to pay for him on the back of your shirt, though. Oh, ridiculous. <laughs> Just yeah. silly, silly amounts of money. And could you could you guarantee that you get it right to spell it? Probably not. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> the kids used to go used to go into like whatever you went, like a JJB back in the day, and like the 16-year-old lads probably shaking, putting it together <laughs> they never spelt it right. <laughs> um, Maggie said barely five one at turf more pipe and hot gin in the cricket club next door, followed by the tricky toffees, uh, being able to look up the moors at the back of the ground. Just sound delightful, that. Was that Boxing yeah. Day? It was. Mm. It was, wasn't yeah. it? Uh, JK's got two. Everton 4 0 Sunderland a week before the FA Cup semi. It was an absolute walk in the park. Even my guy K scored. Secret weapon. Uh, Pinar made a job of James McLean in the corner, which was even sweeter. And uh, Everton 1 0 Chelsea with Charleston and the smoke bomb. One of yours there, Foxy. Uh, yeah. Steven said, probably Fiorentina. Uh, your classic uh, Everton tragedy there. How uh, can Liam... anyone pick that game? How can anyone pick that it, game? It was, it was a great... I mean, for the... You for have the to job, eliminate the, the context of it, though. It was great. Because, I mean, if like like sort of Matt saying, you know, we're, you can't... We shouldn't celebrate the Crystal Palace thing, but at that game, while that game was on, penalties notwithstanding, it was brilliant. I, I don't think I've ever witnessed an atmosphere like that in the ground, to be honest. Um, so I can't see where he's coming from. Um, Liam, Arsenal 3-0 under Martinez, surely a contender for many. Uh, Ian, 3-3, three, three, uh, the Derby in 2013, shit end, great game. Yep, yeah, I agree. Uh, Gary, West Ham, Upton Park, uh, two in a week in 07 uh, Jim, Everton, 2 0 v Newcastle, first game of the season, boiling hot, optimism, dunk playing like a superhero. That yeah. was tremendous, that wasn't it? That was, that, was, that was proper what every opening day should be like, the weather and everything. That temperature must have set a record that day, mate. I remember oh, it was, sitting in the ladder, so it was ridiculous. It was outstanding. Uh, Peter Winston said the buying game. Keith, when we last won a game, that was barely easily pleased there, Keith. Um, <laughs> and John, and then the, <laughs> best, the best ever game I've been to will be this Sunday because it will be his first. Come oh, on, John. One way to finish, Come on, so, I am, I am hoping it will be for you and for all our sake. Um, questions from Gary, Foxy, Dan, Chris, Mike, <laughs> Liam, Liam, Warren, Tommy. Uh, I'll fit them in over the next couple of weeks. You got a shitload in. Um, but yeah, thanks to everyone who sent questions in. Thanks to Foxy, Dave, and Matt. Uh, have a great weekend. Up those toffees. We'll catch you next time on Mailbag. <laughs>